Today on another exciting episode of the John Mayaki Show. We are glad to have you on the show. Today we will be discussing the academic profile and um, achievement of the four most popular governorship candidates in the November 6th election in Anambra State and the Professor Soludo's um, statement on a particular certificate holder aspiring to govern a sophisticated state like Anambra. Joining me in this um, show today is um, Dr. Chinidu uh, Omioji, he's a PhD holder, um, he's a senior media aide to Senator Andy Oba, um, he's a British trained uh, business and management consultant and expert based in Abuja, um, he's also a stakeholder member of the All Progressive Congress. He is from Unubi, Newi South local government area of Anambra State. Mr. Chinedu, you're welcome on this show. So, we're also expecting another person to join us in the course of this show. Before then, we're going to tell you that it's going to be an exciting show, especially that the Independent National Electoral Commission has um, fixed November 6th for the conduct of a number of governorship election. Um, our lines are displayed on the screen. Feel free to call us and make your contribution. Um, in this show today, we will be discussing the candidates of the APC, Senator Andy Uba. We will be discussing the candidate of the YPP, Ifani Uba. We will be discussing the candidacy of a APGA candidate, that is uh, Charles Soludo, is a professor. We will also be discussing the PDP candidate, Valentine Ozibo. Okay, the above can be said to be the major contenders who have also presented their academic qualifications to uh, INEC. So, when this um, program contacted the Electoral Commission for the qualifications of these candidates, it was discovered that only the YPP uh, governorship candidate, um, Ifani Oba, submitted a NECO um, result. But it was gathered that he has a law, he's a law graduate from a base university in Abuja. But when we, on that, um, you can find on the screen. Um, what was submitted to INEC, that is from INEC Potter. Um, I, I do not know if that has been um, updated, but as at the last time we contacted INEC Potter, that is what you have. Only he himself submitted NECO. All right, this may have fueled the accusation of the candidate of ABGA uh, candidate, Charles Soludo, who said the state was too sophisticated to be governed by a certificate holder. Um, I think. Um, it needs to be told that um, uh, we are yet to confirm if um, the base university law graduate of um, of uh, Ifan Yoba, as published on the INEC portal, the candidate of APC submitted his primary schooling certificate, his work, and a bachelor's of art, bachelor's of art, that is, um, Andy Oba submitted um, his um, degree certificate, which is a bachelor's of art. However, um, here is there is a brief profile of the candidate. Um, Andy Uba will be starting with him. He's a native of Uga in uh, Aguata local government area of Anambra State. Um, he was born around um, 1958, uh, December 14th, thereabout in Enugu, Nigeria. All right. After his primary education and secondary education, Andy Uba traveled overseas for his tertiary education. Um, he schooled at uh, Concordia University in Montreal in Canada, where he obtained his first degree in um, 1984. Okay. Thereafter, he worked for some time with Golden State Mutual Assurance in California between the year of um, 85 and 92. While at the United States working, Andy Uba participated in the electoral process that um, uh, brought in 
uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo to power in um, 1999. When that election was finally won, Senator Anduba was appointed special assistant on domestic duties and domestic affairs to President Olusegun Obasanjo. Okay, in that um, thereafter, in um, year 2007, Anduba contested for the governorship election in Anambra State and was declared winner. All right. Uh, however, a challenge of the election in court by Peter Obi had the entire process um, annulled. Uh, it was truncated as the court heard that there was no vacancy in Anambra State Government House to warrant that election in the first place. In April 2011, and Uba contested for and won election as PDP candidate for Anambra South Senatorial District. In the, year 2020, in the year 2015, he again contested and won election as PDP candidate for Anambra South Senatorial District again in the second time in the Senate. Um, he, he also defected to the APC in February 2017 and emerged the Guba candidate of the party in November for the November 6, 2021 governorship election. Okay, we'll be taking now um, the PDP candidate, uh, Valentine Ozebo. Uh, he was born in around the 20th of July, um, 1970. He attended Christ the Redeemer's um, College, where he obtained his um, senior school certificate. He obtained a degree in accounting from the University of Nigeria in Suka uh, in 19... 94 and an MBA in banking and finance from the same university that was in 2000. In 1998, he obtained a professional qualification in accounting from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and taxation from the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria in 2020. In 2020, in 2004, uh, Valentin Muzibu obtained uh, an MSc in finance from That's Lancaster from University, United Kingdom. Zibo obtained a professional qualification in credit administration from the Institute of Credit Administration in 2015. Oh, wonderful. That was, that, that's quite great and encouraging. He emerged the governorship candidate of the PDP in a thinly contested primary. Um, the candidate of the Progressive Grand Alliance, Charles Solido, is a Nigerian economist and a professor, a one-time governor and chairman of the board of directors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. We all know him. Charles Aludo was also an aspirant for the uh, Anambra State Governorship seat in, 20, in 2010. Born on 28 July 1960, Soludo hailed from Aguata local government area of Anambra State. Don't forget he studied economics and then um, graduated in 84, 1984. He obtained his master's degree in economics in 87 and has a doctorate um, in economics in 89 from the same university. In 1980, 1998, Soludo became a professor of economics at the University of Nigeria and Soka, and 1999 became a visiting professor um, in a Swarthmore College in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, U.S. Professor Soludo joined the Nigerian government in 2003 and as, and a, as the chief economist uh, advisor to former President Olusegun Obasanjo and then Chief Executive Officer of the National Planning Commission of Nigeria. Okay, in May 2007, yeah, in May 2004, he became the Chairman of um, Central Bank of Nigeria. Also, he got an appointment from the Nigeria President, um, the present President, uh, Mohamed Buhari, to be part of the newly formed 8th Member Economic Advisory Council on the 16th of September 2019. Soludo contested the Anambra governorship election in 2010 on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, but eventually lost um, to Peter Obi. In February 2021, Soludo officially declared his intention to run for the position of the governor of Anambra State under the banner of the uh, All Progressive Grand Alliance. And now, we have the Young Progressive Party candidate, Ifan Yoba, born. Um, on the 3rd of uh, September 1971 uh, in Anambra State. He hails from Umunuka village in uh, Otolo town of Newe, um, the highly industrialized city of Anambra State. He dropped out of school as a tender age to learn trade. Um, if I had since gone on many business courses and conferences which helped in sharpening his entrepreneurial skills. Okay, he also studied owner president management program at harvard university Massachusetts 
in USA. He founded the authority newspaper on the 19th of um, 19th of October, yeah, thereabout in 2015. He also founded Ifan Oba Football Club in 2015. Um, this he did following the acquisition of Gabros International Football Club. In 2016, the football, the football club of uh, Ifan Oba became the first Nigerian club to sign the Brazilian footballers and trainers. The club also partnered with West Ham United in um, England. And uh, within one year of his acquisition, Ifan Oba won Nigerian FA Cup. And so, we've seen the profile of these four candidates, their qualification and achievements. I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Chinedu, um, what can you say about your candidate? Good afternoon, our listeners and viewers. Thank you for having me. Go ahead. I'm here representing um, my principal, Senator Dr. Angiba, the official flag bearer and candidate of the All Progressive Brand Alliance. The upcoming presidential election of Anambra State coming up on November 6, 2021. Well, let me start from uh, the minimum requirement uh, placed by INEC for contestants for the position of government or governorship as it were. The minimum qualification for this position or aspiring for this position is a secondary school certificate. That is that's a West African school certificate examination. That is the minimum requirement. However, my principal has scored above that. He went on to study in the United States of America, as he rightly posited, and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Geography and Urban Analysis, like you said. So that is where we are, and I would like to uh, stick to what submitted to INEC, and what is recognized as his qualification. Thank you so very much. Wonderful. We need to just oppose this with the statement credited to Professor Charles Soludo to the effect that Anambra was too sophisticated to be governed by a school certificate holder. We may not know who he's talking to, but like we said, we visited um, the website, uh, INEX website, and we saw what was submitted um, by the candidates. Um, we, we, that is the major four candidates, the APGA, the APC, the PDP, and YPP. Okay, it will be recalled that a senator representing Kaduna Central Senatorial District, uh, Senator Shiusani, had lambasted Professor Soludo when he said his policies, um, that his policies um, had, as head of the IPES Bank, brought the country to its terrible state as at the time. Senator Sani said, we should not forget that Soludo's stewardship at the CBN the was foundation the foundation of the of correct economic crisis in the country. Um, he was reacting to Soludo's speech at the fourth Progressive Governance Lecture. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a series of the Progressive Governors uh, Forum in Kaduna some time ago. Um, so Soludo made scathing remarks in the full glare of APC Governors and Vice, Vice President Yemi Osibanjo, who was present at the lecture series. But the Senator said it was too good to remind Soludo of the role he played in bringing down the country's economy at the time. He said if Soludo and his PDP government, as a then Soludo was in PDP as a PDP government, had actually implemented lofty ideas of reform, we couldn't have found ourselves where we are today. If Soludo, according to Senator Shilsani, if Soludo and others have had um, combated the symptoms, PNB uh, President Muhammad Buhari could have had now focused on the ailments. Okay. So the question will be that those, it means that being a PhD holder comes with, does it mean that those with PhD holder comes with the magic wand ability to turn the state around? I want to find out from you, Dr. Chinedu, what do you think? Do you think you must own a PhD, you must be a PhD holder just as you are before you can turn the state around? As an academic myself, um, I respect uh, the fact uh, that um, uh, Professor Charles Sumido is a PhD holder and he has taught in the University of Nigeria. Let's give, it, let, let's give that to him. 
as his credit. But I do not think that having a PhD or being a professor anywhere or any university is a criteria or is an evidence or an assurance that a candidate will perform when he becomes a governor or indeed any office for that matter. I do not think uh, uh, having a PhD is enough. There are a lot more. There are a lot more to have to be in your position for you to be able to perform in terms of governance and good governance for that matter. <laughs> it is not just uh, Senator Philip Sani who has criticized them, Professor Charles uh, We are all aware it's in the public domain that when he was working with Okunjo Iwala, there were accusations and counter accusations. Dr. Ngozi Okunjo-Iwala has publicly criticized Sibudu for his policies and his approach to governance. It is not just him. In the book, Accidental Public Servant, The Accidental Public Servant, written by the current governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir Erifai, there were also criticisms in that book against the person of Professor Charles Sibudu. So for Sibudu to come out, public domain and begin to cast aspersions on other aspirants because of qualifications or because he thinks he's the only uh, a candidate who has a PhD. Mm -hmm. This current contest is a disservice and I think it's unfair to other aspirants and it's unfair to the people of Anambra State. We have evidence of governors, both past and present, who have PhD in their possession and have not been able to impact on their states or different offices they've occupied. I do not like to mention names, but I want to make a quick a quick uh, reference to what we have, what we are seeing in terms of development. So this is an evidence that uh, it is not just um, a PhD that matters. A PhD is not a criteria in office. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Um, so the question will be that, does it mean that being a PhD holder comes with the magic touch? One needs to pro properly govern a state like Anambra. All right. Isn't it a display of pride and arrogancy for Professor Soludo to think that it is only when you obtain a PhD that you qualify to govern a state? Of course, I'm also wanting to obtain a PhD degree uh, in the process. I mean, the process, but uh, I do not think that um, is the best qualification to say without that you can't govern and say, does this statement of Soludo uh, not show his disregard for those who have been disadvantaged in Nanambra, especially especially the rural dwellers who whose votes you would be needing to win the governorship position? Does Soludo's statement mean um, that to be governor of those who are only, is he going to be the governor of graduates only the lines are open feel free to call us um, feel free to call us is he going to be a governor of just graduates it is evident that soludo attempted to focus attention on an area he considers himself over and above others it's okay no doubt if this is the case it is a tactless approach for those of us at the john Mayapi show and a poor argument which exposes his understanding of leadership particularly in a democracy soludo's reveal himself as one of as one who has no sense of history, in spite of the many years spent in classroom and within the walls of institutions and healthy libraries, where we thought he should know better. Um, with what has happened so far, I am not too sure he, he, he will um, get himself properly together um, if voted in. Worse than this is the fact that such narrow-mindedness could be a symptom of lack of curiosity beyond the limit of, and scope of academic pursuit and commitment. In reality, this makes him the worst candidate for public office. Public office requires the ingenuity of a generalist. It demands a mind alive with curiosity and a sufficient knowledge of the working of several sectors. The lines are open. If you're watching us live from any part of the world, please feel free to call in and make your contribution. And so the problem with Soludo um, for us, not just him and those people who also believe in that is that um, they pay lip service to democracy 
but um, have secret longings for secured or aristocracy uh, as a blinding, as a blinding. See, 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 this this is the problem with these guys. This arrogant belief is that leadership is his best right as a PhD holder. It's not true. It's condescension, condescension for the mass, uh, for the people whom he is going to seek his um, his um, mandate. Is it, um, it, it, quite appalling. You see, no matter the pretense of veil. A, a solido as of veil that he, he, it's not going to be promises. It's not going to be no matter the pretense or the veil. And so we, we need you to tell us again, Doctor Chinedu, um, what what is your master bringing to the table in a number of stage? Thank you very much uh, once again. Um, the statement by Professor Charles to the smacks of arrogance and shows his disdain for people who are not uh, up to date in terms of quali qualifications. But what is my principal bringing uh, to the table? That's, I think that is where we have to, uh, what the narrative we have to stick to. My principal is bringing progress to an umbrella state. He's focusing on agriculture and industrial revolution, sustainable infrastructural development, qualitative education, entrepreneurial orientation and social development. These are the areas where he's focusing on. You know that uh, uh, and, uh, we are all aware that Anambra State is a commercial city. But even after the signing of the AFTA agreement, the African Free Trade Agreement, which Nigeria has assented to, Nigeria is a signatory to, nothing has been done in terms of taking advantage of that agreement. Anambra State as a commercial city is supposed to be tapping into such agreements, if not meeting international uh, uh, market players, at least regionally in terms of uh, reaching uh, the ECOWAS market. This is what my principal is bringing to the increase global trade. We want to empower our people to the point that they begin to participate in global trade not just that we manufacture goods within this country for our consumption, but we're able to export them and earn foreign exchange, and by that improve the economy of Anambra State and Nigeria in general. And then in terms of quality education, uh, we are aware that when he was in the Senate, two-term lawmaker, we are aware of massive improvements and rehabilitation done across the educational sector in Anambra South local government. So many um, uh, schools, both primary and secondary schools, had rehabilitation of their classroom blocks, were equipped with um, materials for study. This is what he intends to replicate at the state government. It will be an all round um, sectoral development in terms of education, social development, infrastructure, and the rest. And then recently, there is evidence that um, the current uh, 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 administration, Anambra State, have done nothing to keep up with the agreement or their counterpart funding or the BEC uh, uh, funding for education. Our principal, or my principal, intends to go back to that universal basic education and fulfill the requirements so that the, uh, the less privileged or even families who who are not so well to do will be able to send their children to school when we get on board. These are some of the things we intend to do. Already we have um, the second Niger bridge being constructed now and almost getting to completion by the All Progressive Congress federal government led administration of President Muhammad Buhari. The intention of my principal or the Andiba administration if voted by the number, a number of electorates, is to improve our infrastructures, link our infra infrastructures in terms of road infrastructures to link to Second Niger region, open up our economies, replicate what the federal government is trying to do in terms of infrastructure across the country in a number of states. That is what we intend to do. And that is why we are soliciting and advocating to an Anambrians and seeking their votes and their mandates for us to be able to bring good governance and bring support to our people. 
Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so very much for, for that. That is quite great. Thousands of Anambrans without a university degree wouldn't be happy to learn that the man who wants to be their government team that they, that they shouldn't, shouldn't be considered for a high office, no matter their success in other endeavors. It's important to remind Professor Soludo that integrity, self-awareness, empathy, curiosity, learning agility, system development, management courage, and other essential qualities of leadership do not come with a university degree at all. Had Mr. Soludo himself possessed a good dose of earning, notably self-awareness, learning agility, he probably would not have uttered those unfortunate statements. The line are open. Please feel free to call and give us your perspective on what you think on this. It may be too, too selfish for us to say he, he, should, he should consider himself um, out of the race. Um, there's a call. Um, let's pick this call and um, hear what this caller wants to contribute to the show. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Dennis Ozibo, speaking from Abuja. Okay, Ozibo speaking from Abuja. Thank you so very much. Your, your contribution, please. Please go ahead with your contribution. Hello? 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 Alright, we lost that call. Um, we lost that call. We, we hope um, it will get back to us again. And so, it may be to, uh, it may be to his benefit at this point to refrain from passing judgment on the other candidates. That is for Professor Soludo. He should stop passing judgment on other candidates. You are into a race. You can't be screening people out of the race. You are also a participant in that election. And so, he needs to focus on res respectfully advertising his strengths. If any, because all indications show that matters of democratic leadership and building a campaign that is effective yet decorous are simply too sophisticated for him to understand. That's my thinking on this show. Um, the lines are free. Um, and so, Dr. Chinidu, again, what will you tell us again um, are your final words in your campaign as you approach your campaign period? Professor or having a PhD is not a, a criteria for good governance. Sorry, Chinidu. So, sorry, Chinidu. Let me pick. Uh, let's pick this call. Hello? Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Your, Thank you. Your name and where you calling from? My name is Mike Olive. Okay. From Nigeria. All right. Your contribution, please.
Thank you so very much for Thank your information. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, um, uh, Dr. Chinidu. Um, thank you for that caller. You can go ahead, sir. So, um, I was saying, um, if Professor Charles Ogugo thinks that uh, having a PhD or being a professor is the only criteria to uh, uh, to superintend uh, or occupy the uh, governorship uh, uh, position of an ambassador, uh, our people should ask him, what is the present condition of the Mbafa Memorial Hospital in his hometown, where his friends and associates and all the well-meaning uh, uh, citizens of Nigeria contributed over two billion naira for that hospital project? What is the present condition of that hospital in the Sofia, his hometown? Does he need a PhD to complete that hospital? With all the contributions and donations from people, for well meaning citizens, does his town, his Sofia, and the people of Sofia not deserve a defeated hospital? Or don't they deserve that hospital? Get working and running for the benefit, for the healthier benefit of people of Sofia. I'll be back to you again. Even the people Sorry, sir. I'll be, around. I'll be back to you again. I'll pick this call now. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Comrade Chipoka, calling from Agwata constituency. Okay, which state is that? Anambra <laughs> State. Thank you so very much. Your, contri your contribution, please. Uh, my contribution is uh, I think that Toledo has lost focus. And uh, in our area, Agwata, he has nothing to write one about. Uh, to compare, if you compare with the uh, his position like Sanusi. When he went to Kali, see what Sanusi has done. He gives schools, he gives courses to people. Uh, Sanusi uh, believes so much in certificate. But we are not talking about certificate. There is some, there is different between credibility and credentials. So we are talking about credibility. So I think Sanusi is talking about certificate. I haven't seen any professor in Nigeria that have done well in governorship. The difference between leadership and leadership, and uh, uh, in fact, if I'm uh, suggest, I will advise Sanudo to go back to university and continue his electoral uh, career. That is the way perfect of. Uh, Sanudo, looking at Anambra State, the situation uh, of uh, Abu, the situation of Abu Ghanas, put Anambra State now is very very important. If I may say, I will say that Sanudo has fallen abysmally. So. For him to be investigating uh, his fellow and parents and uh, looking down on them, he's very, he's very, very busy. Uh, so, so, if I'm there, we are not voting to run because he has the professorship. We are going to vote people who have the money to help others, to reach others. Someone like uh, Senator uh, Andrew Ban, who needs to read you, without him, to read you, you should understand that Andrew Ban is in London. He reaches, he reaches the, the, the height of uh, his career. So, he is only to raise the value of the Soludo as one of the people he really he builds, he builds human, uh, human capital. Now, who and who has Soludo raised in an ambassade? Who and who has reached so good? So, uh, in conclusion of my contribution, Soludo should be mindful of his speech. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you so very much for this call. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, we have um, our brother joining us um, on this show. Uh, apart from uh, Dr. Uh, Chinidu, we have Ambassador David Ndubisi Ewenike. He here from Ngwa Fija, um, Orumba South Local Government Area of Anambra State. Um, uh, hello. Good afternoon, Sammy, for coming in late. Yeah, thank you so very much. Please give us um, two minutes of your brief remark. Hello. That's ended. Hello. All right. Thank you so very much. Um, we we expect you to call us if um, you can see the 
the phone numbers online, the phone numbers are displayed, call us and then give us your perspective on the issue of Soludo saying somebody with um, a, uh, not just a degree certificate, somebody with a certificate cannot govern Anambra State. Um, tell us your perspective about this. Um, the lines are there displayed. Um, feel free to call us. Mr. Uh, if you are hearing us and you can't um, see us again, kindly call us um, on the line displayed and give us your perspective on this show. Good. A number of state uh, governorship election will be coming up on the 6th of November this year. We want to expect that the candidates will um, base their campaign on issues and not insults. We want to believe that um, a number of states can be governed by experienced personalities as we already have among the political parties. Um, the lines are there. Feel free to call us and join us on this show. We want to believe that you do not necessarily need to become a PhD holder before you can govern a state. Um, we want to advise uh, Professor Charles Soludo, as for those of us on the John Mayaki show, to please endeavor to create a campaign around issues, campaign that will bring development to the people of Anambra State and give them more hope um, if um, the people, of course, people are already asking him to uh, leave, the, leave the race because a lot of persons have criticized him, his policies and all of those. When he was in the CBN, and um, uh, uh, we have um, Sani, Shil Sani criticizing him. We are, we, like um, the speakers have said, we have a lot of persons who have criticized his policies. Is he going to bring that to an Anambra State evil Tedding? So we want to advise all the aspirants, all the candidates, sorry, all the candidates to please um, develop their campaigns around issues and um, what they plan to do for the state. We will not take too much of your time. This will be all on the on this edition of John Mayaki Show. Um, we will be coming back again on Anambra next week until we come your way again. Remember that life is a gift and that every day you live to witness life. It is an opportunity for you to do something great, something extraordinary, something spectacular, something that will change your destiny and the destiny of others around your area. Take charge and take care. Bye for now. Thank you very much. You're welcome.